princesses! Today I'm going to be talking about the Jessup brushes. These brushes are super ultra mega cheap and you can find these on eBay. The reason I wanted to review and talk about these brushes is because they are absolutely perfect for beginners. The best part about using these brushes is that it will show you which brushes you usually favour. I would then suggest purchasing those brushes in sort of higher end version and spending more money on the brushes that you use regularly. This stops you from buying hundreds of dollars worth of brushes that you may never ever use. So I have bought two sets of the Jessup brushes and both of these include face brushes and eye brushes. These brushes all use synthetic hair as well which is why they are so cheap. So to start with we have the five piece kabuki brush set. I don't think anybody necessarily needs five kabuki brushes for the face. I think it's a little bit extreme. I mean these ones like they are so similar. There is only a slight sort of angle difference on that um, and it's the same with these two. They are so similar that you probably don't need both if you're not a YouTuber or a makeup artist. So we're going to start off with the tapered face brush. This is a really interesting brush to use. I find that it's really nice for foundation because you can get into the little gaps that you cannot get into with a round sort of brush. But I don't think this brush in particular is very good because the bristles are very stiff. That means when you're sort of blending, it sort of flicks and it doesn't provide a nice blended look for the skin. It also has the perfect shape to fit under your cheekbones for contour, but again the same issue is that it just doesn't blend well because it's cheap. This is a brush that I would potentially purchase in a higher, ver higher end version because I think that it's a good type of brush for me, it's just that this one isn't very good. Next up we have the round face brush and the angled face brush. I quite like the round face brush as a sort of buffing brush but I don't really use the angled brush that much plus this one sheds really badly you can see that I can just sort of pull a bunch of hairs out which is just you know another reason that they are very cheap and that I wouldn't use these forever because they are not going to last forever but I definitely prefer this brush over this brush even though they are pretty similar. I don't find that the round face brush sheds nearly as much as the angled face brush and I'm not sure if it's because I washed this badly when I was younger because I have had these for about four years now so they are still doing pretty well but um, I really like this one. I don't feel like I need to buy a more expensive version of this one either. I'd be quite happy using this until it sort of deteriorated or got too gross and then I would just buy a better version of it. The last kabuki face brushes are the flat face brush and the flat angled face brush. And I don't really understand flat face brushes. I find them pretty hard to use. I'm not sure why it is. I just find that I prefer the round one more. I also don't understand why you need a flat angled as well as a completely flat brush. They are so similar. It is ridiculous that you would need both. But I don't know. I guess they must just work better for some people in comparison to the round ones. And I think that's totally fair. Then we have the Kabuki eye brushes. These ones are all miniature versions of the face brushes. So to start off, we have the tapered eye brush. I don't really know what to do with this one. I guess you could sort of use it in the crease, but I find it kind of huge. My eyes are not that big, and I just I don't really have any use for this one. I find that it has the same issue with the tapered face brush, where it's just got very stiff bristles, and it ends up sort of just flicking. So when you blend, you can't really blend without flicking away half your eyeshadow, which is totally pointless. Then we have the round eye brush and the angled eye brush. Again, the same with the face brushes. I really like the round topped brush more than I like the angled top brush, but they're just so similar, it's ridiculous. I quite like using the round brush for popping colour into the outer V of my eye, though it is so big that it's sort of just like you just dab it on and then flick it around a little bit and you're done because it's kind of huge. But to be honest, I just find these brushes a little bit too big for my eyes because if you look at that, like, there's the entire, like, outer half of my eye. Oh, I just moved my contacts. It was gross. Um, and what are you supposed to do with that? It's just packing on a lot of color because it's so big. So I probably wouldn't purchase these in a high-end version because I just don't find them that helpful. But they do work fine. Um, these ones are really nice and soft. You can see that it's much softer than the tapered eye brush. And I'm not sure if that's just because of the shape. But yeah, these ones are quite nice. Lastly, we have the flat angled eye brush and the flat eye brush. I kind of like the flat top brush for all over eyeshadow application, but I really don't see the need for the angled one. Like, again, 
same with that same with the face brushes they're just so similar apart from that little angle I don't find these ones this useful and um, I probably wouldn't purchase these in a more expensive version. So starting off with the face brushes, this is the large powder brush and the duo fiber brush. I bought these brushes in the pink color because I thought it would be cute but it actually looks a little bit tacky. I kind of regret getting these in pink and I probably wouldn't get more brushes in pink. I would just stick to like neutrals basically because it just looks a bit eh. The duo fiber brush is quite nice. It is very large and sort of spread out, but it's very sparse with the bristles. I already had the MAC, I don't know what number this is, it's worn off because it's so old. MAC 187 brush, which is just a, a regular duo fiber brush, and I've had this one for five years, and it's still fine. I much prefer the MAC one because it just has a smaller surface area for the, br for the bristles, but there are actually more bristles in this one. This one is just so sparse. Um, it's okay for 50 cents. It's not bad. I believe this one was maybe like 20 to 30 dollars New Zealand, so it's much pricier. I would expect it to be better, but this one is not bad if this is your first venture into duo fiber brushes. The large powder brush is not one of my favorite brushes. It's kind of huge, and I don't like how long the bristles are. I would much prefer it if they were sort of half that length because it would be easier to distribute powder over your face rather than sort of doing that. It just kind of gets everywhere. It's also really big, so like if I was doing blush, I would <laughs> I would look like a clown. Whereas if I'm doing powder, like if I'm powdering my face, it's hard to get it evenly distributed because the brushes bend like that. I don't find it very practical, even if you're trying to lightly dab it like that, it still ends up bending over and it's just not a practical brush. I don't really like this one. I wouldn't purchase a brush this big again. Now we have the large angled contour and the foundation brush. This is my favorite brush and this is my least favorite brush. I just do not use paddle brushes. I find them really awful to use. They don't blend foundation properly. It feels like I'm painting my face. So I just don't like this type of brush. Um, the brush itself is not bad. It's quite thick and fluffy, which I like. I think it blends foundation better than a really thin paddle brush, but I still don't like this one. So this is a cheap way of finding out that I, I should not spend $20 on a foundation brush because I won't use it. However, with the angled contour brush, we have a completely different story. I adore this brush, not for contour because I don't really contour, but actually for blusher because I find that this is the ideal sort of way to sweep the um, blusher up your cheeks and I think it's a really good brush. I probably would purchase a better version of this one because I do use it so much. I pretty much use it daily unless I'm using my fingers for a blush. But this isn't to say that this one isn't good. It's totally fine. It's nice and fluffy. It's very soft. It's very easy to blend with. So I definitely recommend this one. Now onto the smaller brushes and the eye brushes. We have a concealer brush and a large shader brush. I actually don't know which one is which for this one. I assume this one is for concealer and this is a large shading brush. But I could totally be doing it wrong because... I don't use either of these. I don't really conceal because I just find it so much of a hassle and you can still see acne scars so like I'm fine with that. I don't really have big under eye bags to conceal so I just don't conceal so I don't use that brush. As for the large shader brush I also don't really use that sort of brush. I mean if it was this one that's a pretty freaking big brush for your eye. That would be all of my moving eyelid as well as into my crease, or if it's this one, yeah, that would be okay, I mean, it would, it would, it would do. I just don't really see the need for them, but that is my personal preference because I don't really wear eyeshadow that much or wear concealer at all, so these could be good for you, but they're not good for me and I wouldn't repurchase these. Then we have the eyeliner, smudger, and angled liner brush. These are some of my favorite brushes. These ones are dirty because I just used them in a makeup tutorial that I just did. But the angled liner brush is my favorite thing for applying my brow products. I do really like this one and it is something that I would repurchase in a higher quality sort of thing. But I like this one because it is quite small. You probably can't really see it that well. Um, because yeah, it is small so you can fit it into the smallest parts of your brows and it doesn't make your brow tail too fat, which I really like. And then for the smudger brush, it is teeny tiny and it's got such thick hairs that it's really good for smudging out the eyeliner or lower lash line. The liner brush is something that I only use every so often, but I have used this for gel eyeliner and it worked really well. So this is again something that I would purchase in a more expensive version. The last brushes are the tapered blending, small angle shading, and eye shading brushes. 
These are some of the brushes that I don't use that often, even though you can see that I have used this one because it is dirty. This, I think, is the tapered blending brush, but I just find it really big. It's got a really big tip and it's very fluffy, so I don't find that it actually blends out product very well because it tends to blend it out really widely, so I end up with product like up in my eyebrows because it's just so big. In comparison to my EXO Beauty tapered blending brush, it is huge. Like, it's seriously so much bigger, it's ridiculous. I find that this one works really well, but I just cannot use this one. The small angled shading brush is another one that I don't really use that often. Um, I don't find it that useful for anything, like, what am I supposed to do with this one? I don't really know. I, it's Maybe if I was doing really intense eyeshadow looks, I might use it, but I don't use it enough to purchase a really good version of it. And the last one is the eye shading brush. I do use this one to pack on the colour onto my lids, but I don't find it that good just because it is very thick, like, it's very big, it is literally the size of half of my eye, so it is good for doing looks where I'm just patting um, a whole bunch of colour on and it doesn't matter where the colour is going, like a base colour or just one colour over the lid. Um, because I don't need to be precise with it, but any precision work like blending or putting things into the outer V This one is just way too huge for that um, But it is still quite cute. I might purchase this in a higher-end version because I do use it a fair amount But I'm hoping that it won't be so thick for the higher-end version because that's just the only thing that I don't really like about it so I really love that these brushes are super inexpensive and that there is a huge range. There are also some great quality brushes and it's the best way to find out what brushes you use regularly. I don't love that some of the brushes are, for me personally, quite useless. Um, a lot of the eyeshadow brushes I don't use because I don't regularly wear eyeshadow. Some of the brushes are pretty average quality, um, the bristles aren't the nicest um, and they don't blend that well. And that the Kabuki face brushes shed quite badly, um, even though mine are four years old they still shed like that when I first bought them. So although I don't regret buying all of these brushes, I do know which ones that I would not repurchase. And I really do think that that is the beauty of the Jessup brushes. They are so inexpensive that you can actually afford to try everything rather than buying $120 of Zoeva brushes. I don't really think that everybody needs five different types of Kabuki face brushes, but how will you know which one works the best for you if you don't try them all? The brushes themselves are not awful quality, there are some where I sort of look at them and I think they could be a lot better, but in general they are fine, they are quite soft and most of them are easy to blend with. But I think these are great purchases if you are on a super tight budget because you actually can afford to buy five different types of Kabuki face brushes and Kabuki eye brushes for such a small amount. So I would recommend these brushes for any princesses that are beginning in makeup or want to experiment with different types of brushes but don't want to spend all of their money on them. Thank you so much for watching this review and I'll see you next time.